What's up everyone, welcome back, and to quote Ice Cube, today was a good day, and why is that you might ask? Well you probably shouldn't because you've clicked the video, you've seen Chronicles of Valeria in the thumbnail, in the title, but for me, it was just a normal day. I woke up, rolled out of bed, uh, looked at my phone, I had a bunch of DMs saying Chronicles of Valeria has posted a new update, and I was like, thank you. Thank you, Caspian. I didn't know what I was going to make a video on today, but you made it real easy. And these videos are, are quite popular. People seem to really enjoy them. So I figured I'd give the people what they want. And this is going to be us going over the, the blog post together, watching the video. It's about seven minutes long. And basically trying to call him on his, on his nonsense, call him on his shenanigans. So the way that I've talked about this before, people always say, oh, why are you still kicking the dead horse? Why are you still making videos on it? Well, for two reasons, really. One, because I like it and it's my channel, so if you don't like it, get fucked. Two, uh, th this game has taken a bunch of money from people, let a whole bunch of people down, and it it's ruined part of the genre that I do like, which is the crowdfunded mo model. They've given it a bad reputation, they've ruined it for people in the future. So what do we have left? We have uh, the court case, which we're going to be following with, with extreme interest. And the other thing would be to just have a little bit of fun with it. Just follow it along, make a couple couple sneak jabs, have a little bit of a laugh, and just see what he's saying, watch him scramble, and, and, try, and try and redeem something good back from it. So that's what I'm doing, and let's go over it today. So Inside Chronicles Lyria Episode 2... Hey all, today we are excited to release the second episode of Inside Chronicles of Valyria. In it, we talk about previous design phases, cool, uh, how our restructured team is focusing its efforts, what restructured team, you've still not given us a singular tangible detail on this, and what this means for our development priorities this year. Again, like, how can we have a conversation about development priorities when we don't know who's developing the game, where you're getting money from, how many people are working on the game, or anything like that. Like, how many coders do you have? How many artists do you have? What's the time frame on things? These are things people have been asking now for months, and all, all he keeps doing is giving these really shitty, like... It's like he's taken P a PR course for about two hours and then just came up front and just been like, oh yeah, I'll just say words and people won't obviously look into it. So as always, there's a lot covered here and we appreciate you'll still have plenty of questions. If you do, please don't hesitate to get, hesitate to get in touch via email address. We'll do our best to reply as quickly as possible. And if a single topic keeps cropping up, we'll pull that and several others together in a blog post. Spoiler alert, I'll give you the ones that are going to keep cropping up. Jeremy, why are you a cunt? Um, where's the game? Where's my money? And uh, when's the game coming out for those people who still do believe it's going to, which, you know, I can't help you there. You already kind of far gone. But obviously that's a little bit of a joke. Like, I, I don't want to, like, personally attack the guys. We're just having fun, guys. Don't worry about it. So let's put our headset on and, uh, and watch this video. Hopefully this time it doesn't look like Jeremy's crying and somebody's holding a Kalashnikov off screen, just like the Exola. Uh, CEO's probably stood there with a uh, AK-47 like, why are you getting me sued, brother? But uh, hopefully that's not actually the case because I've heard some very, very, very troubling stories hey about that guy. It's Jeremy here from Soulbound Studios. Hey, Jeremy. Welcome to episode two of Inside Chronicles of Illyria. In episode one, we covered a fair number of topics, including early development, not really. past difficulties we encountered, and more. You didn't really. It wasn't intended to cover everything, but instead give you an overview of what we've accomplished so far. In this video, and into the next, we'll be taking a closer look at what we're working on now, as well as our current and future plans. When we set out to create COE, design and development was split into three phases. The first phase, previously referred to as pre-alpha, was intended to give us time hey, it's Minecraft. to build our platform and scalable backend while validating Sweet, they it made against Minecraft. our core game systems. Highest on that list was our physics and chat servers. The second phase, referred to as Alpha 1, contained milestones and feature work focusing on elements you'd expect from a more traditional MMORPG. We, we never got to see Alpha 1, by the way. We never, never got to it. Uh, the, the obviously, pre-Alpha was the, uh, the Prelaria that they were calling it, which we'll probably see within this, yeah, we're going to see within this video. And eventually, all they ever released was like a little jumping puzzle, which... Literally, I've had I've had multiple conversations with multiple developers that they say they could throw together what the guy had in the in the thing that they released four years after for everybody to play. And I say everybody, I mean like a very select number of people. They could throw that together in a couple of hours with pre-made assets. So the fact that that's what they had and that's what they showed people doesn't ins shouldn't inspire anybody with confidence. This included things such as exploration, trade, crafting, combat, 
and plenty of opportunities for adventure. You've seen but signs never of this in it. previously released videos. Whether it's jousting on horseback, sneaking through settlements, or just exploring the game world, these videos were intended to demonstrate how your character looks, feels, and interacts with the world around them in COE and showcase our unique take on that what players right typically though. expect from the genre. At its heart, the Alpha 1 mechanics were designed to be accessible to those familiar with MMORPGs, but innovate in ways that solved well-known problems, paving the way for the next evolution of MMOs. The third phase... <laughs> that was that's super innovative, by the way, getting stuck inside a room with an NPC in a game that looks like fucking... Uh, looks like it was made 15 years ago in pain. But I will just say, again... I don't want to like keep beating a dead horse, but if you've got all these things, Jeremy, and that was Alpha 1 and what Alpha 1 was intended to be, and those videos were to showcase what you've already got, why did nobody ever get to play it, mate? Why did you just let your company go go bankrupt and close? And I had somebody comment earlier, and I don't want to like call people out by name, but I will just address this real quick. Somebody said, oh, Soulbound Studios was a non-essential business, so they had to close down during COVID. And it's like, People at this point will just make make things up to to you know inform their bias as much as possible because the company closed before there was any mandatory shutdowns whatsoever and they didn't close due to COVID they closed because they had no fucking money and all the employees went and got another job. Is it? I forgot what the studio is called, but there's another studio who at least nine of the employees from COE went to go and work for. So most of their employees are already gone and that's why I'm wondering who's now working on the game. Where have you got money? Because I've been told he's got a $300,000 PPP loan or whatever it's called in America. And that's for obviously helping keep the business open. He already closed his business at one point by his own admission and then said he didn't close it, of course, in the lawyer response. But if he's got 300 grand, where he lives in the office, if you don't know, guys, is in Bellevue in Washington, which if you don't know, is the office was two streets away or something like that from valve's office now the average wage of a software developer in bellevue is a hundred thousand dollars per year if he got 300 grand that means he's gonna have to work for th for free and he could hire three like mid-level uh software developers for one year so he had four years eight point something million dollars plus whatever money he put in himself and he couldn't even get an alpha one into our hands but now we're expected to believe with 300 grand, no outside investment, no Kickstarter, no crowdfunding, no money from us and no employees, he's going to somehow get a whole game in front of us. Yeah, if you believe that, I'm sorry, but you're out your motherfucking mind. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but you, you're absolutely fucking cracked if you feel that way. Which we previously referred to as but I respect, Alpha 2, I respect the, contained uh, features and mechanics the that hope, were far more I guess. political and organizational in nature. It focused heavily on land ownership settlement management, trade, taxes, governance, and the emergent storytelling that accompanies the rise and fall of nobles and aristocrats. It's the side of the game that appeals most to those who enjoy playing settlement management, 4X, and grand strategy games. It's also the side of COE that appeals to those looking to exploit the metagame, negotiating, deceiving, and forming alliances against strategic... Oh, can you explain to us about deceiving, Caspian? I know that's low-hanging fruit, by the way, guys. I'm just having fun. But what I would like to address real quick, because these are all videos we've already seen. How come if you've got all this, all this stuff there, and he said this, literally he has said this, that this is all part of the game that's already been made, if you already have all this area and all these things in the game, why are you showing us recycled footage from four years ago? Why are you not making a... Literally, how easy would it be to prove me wrong and prove the, the haters and the, and the doubters wrong to log into your game that you apparently have and just fucking live stream you walking around in the game, interacting with things, doing things, and be open about it? I, I don't want to say, like, Ashes of Creation is the bastion of, of transparency or whatever, because they're absolutely not. But... When you compare, say, Ashes of Creation, even Pantheon, which is a game that's that's inarguably been in development hell for years now, and we'll make a video on that later because there is good news if you are a Pantheon fan, um, they can log on and have people log on with them and stream the game for three hours long and test it and show you what they've got. And you're recycling footage from four fucking years ago, mate. Like, why, why is there not something clicking here and adding up for people that still somehow believe this is real? Egic enemies. In an It'd be so to easy to prove to me wrong and hold their station as a powerful player. Just log on and show us the game on the world stage. It's a meta game seen in other games like Eve Online. 
a metagame we refer to as the Dance of Dynasties. Development of Chronicles of Lyria is the culmination and integration of all three phases, and while we could have put either Alpha 1 or 2 first, we put them in the order that we did because we felt the more traditional MMO aspects would appeal to the largest number of players. Not only because they're more familiar, but because the nature of settlement and domain management means there's always a need for more adventurers and landowners than aristocrats and nobles. Interestingly enough, between our method of crowdfunding, the ability like to engage in the dance into my of soul. dynasties it's during ongoing me a bit. development, I'm not and gonna people's break ability contact to role-play and organize communities around their settlements and domains, what transpired was that the Alpha 2 phase of development was far more interesting and exciting to our active community members. Looking at where we are after the layoffs and the impact of the pandemic, it'll come as no surprise Fox that we've sake. had to adjust our course of development to react to these challenges. I, I, again, I'm sorry guys, this is going to be like a 20 minute video for a 7 minute video, but if you go back and look at, look at the COVID numbers for when they shut down the studio and look at the lockdowns and, and everything, COVID had literally no impact on this studio, absolutely none, unless he's talking about the impact of his community not giving them more money when they were already bankrupt like if you're saying oh we need money here's a here's a land sale and then seven days later oh we're bankrupt i've got to fire every single employee and close my studio down covid didn't affect you bro you you were out of money absolutely i called it a month beforehand i did the math you were out of money covid didn't do anything to you you were you were done already it was just a convenient excuse as a result We've shuffled our priorities to focus on the things that make the best use of our resources and provide us with the best path toward completing Chronicles of Illyria. Taking the previous two points together meant placing our efforts into design and development of the kingdom, settlement, and land management mechanics, rather than furthering the adventuring mechanics, effectively swapping Alpha 1 and Alpha 2. This is partially due to the sheer number of animations and other assets still needed for the adventuring mechanics but also because kingdom and land management provides backers far more value and opportunities to interact with their bloodlines, settlements, and domains. Over the coming months, we'll be detailing the roadmap for the remainder of the project. But in recent months, we've been working to delve deeper into the design of land, settlement, and domain management, as well as putting together plans to get these and other mechanics into your hands as quickly as possible. To begin with, we've been revisiting our earlier work on Illyria chat, in spite of having Discord for out-of-character communication, we go. the benefits of providing in-character communication toward encouraging safe roleplay and continued community building can't be understated, and we're looking forward to providing new and better ways for you to engage with one another. Second... I would just like to say, and somebody made this point before on, on the previous video, you've literally said you can't open your Discord or your forums because you lack the, the appropriate means to moderate it but you somehow have the resources to make a role-playing function and moderate a role-playing function for your community. Something doesn't add up here. That, like, one of them requires more resources than the other, and you can do that one, but you can't open up your forums. It's a little bit fucking weird, that one, personally. And most importantly, I've been doing focused, low-level design work on the kingdom, settlement, and land management mechanics. I've been working to detail the various economics surrounding currency, trade, Got that frame taxes, rate. and land ownership. On the settlement management side, I've been working on nailing down a functionally complete list of all the different building types with their various station and other requirements, as well as the associated passive and active bonuses they provide. And on the domain management side, I've been diving into design focused on governments, criminal justice, succession, diplomacy, and conflict. The last of which requires establishing the full set of Casus Belli. Now this video is too short for me to dive into depth on any one of these. So we'll be providing in-depth design blogs to go over them in the coming weeks and months. This change in focus and reordering of our milestones is an opportunity for the Chronicles of Illyria community as well as Soulbound Studios to chart a new path forward, to redefine the way you interact with one another and the way we interact with you. I wanna stress that none of this means development on the adventuring mechanics has ended. It's simply a case that right now, based on the challenges we face, getting something into your hands has never been more important, and we want to focus our attention on the areas that are most exciting to our backers and community members. Moving forward, we'll be gradually... Am I losing my mind here, or earlier in the video did he say the things that are most 
important to MMO players is the end adventuring mechanics and stuff. And now he's seeing the things that are m most important are the st the things that he's working on now that aren't the adventuring mechanics. Seems a little bit out of whack there, but it does seem like what he's saying is that they're going to release some version of the game with all of the you know management system of the land and things like that and put all of the adventure mechanics and combat and and things of that nature on the back burner which is the stuff they were already working on before so does that mean that they're releasing some form of like city building management game in, instead uh and then going from there trying to make money off people in that way if so that's that's i guess what they meant in the last video by saying they are altering the timeline of their deliverables or, or however the fuck he worded it. Demonstrating more and more of what we've been working on, but as stated, please be patient with us while we work to deliver on one of the most highly anticipated releases and our journey towards the completion of COE. Okay everyone, as I mentioned in the first video, feel free to send feedback, questions, and comments to InsideCOE at SoulboundStudios.com and I'll do my best to address what I can in an upcoming video. Keep an eye out for our first all-new design journal in the coming weeks, which will explore the recent design work in greater depth. Pledged to the continued development of the Soulborn engine and the Chronicles of Illyria, this is Jeremy Walsh from Soulbound Studios, and we'll see you on the next episode of Inside Chronicles of Illyria. Now look how happy he looks. What a happy little man. All right, well, thank you very much, Jeremy. I, I uh, appreciate that one. What I will say is these videos are... They're just completely full of intangibles that he just says words. Obviously, like, I'm not a developer, but when he's saying things that we haven't seen, we haven't seen the back end, we haven't seen what code they've got, we've not seen what what systems they actually have in place, just saying, oh, we're working on this, and then he names a bunch of systems or how they're working on the systems or how they're going to fit together, it all doesn't mean anything. Like, even developers, it's it's just words. It's things that tangibly have no link to being a real thing unless you show us that it's there and like i say there is absolutely nothing sh stopping him being transparent there there is nothing other than a lawsuit and of course that's a big thing but if you have nothing to hide if you think that the lawsuit is is uh, frivolous and that nothing's going to come of it then why would you not be showing us what you already have like if you've got all this work that you put in on the alpha one client and this this uh, city management building management etc uh, kingdom management why have you not just said all right guys on friday for two hours i'm putting up a twitch live stream and i'll be logging on and i'll be showing you all the game world and what we've got so far how everything works together what we've actually done so far and what we have this is our team this is blah 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 he's working on this this is blah 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 he's working on that uh, why why is it the case that you can't do that and instead it's just these videos that, that don't mean anything like he they're very very obviously scripted in a way that he's saying things that can't come back and bite him he's not given definitive dates he's not given any kind of actual tangible uh, evidence that any of this stuff even exists it's all old footage it's all uh, old words that he said before it's just, it's a bunch of, it's a nothing burger, like we've said before, and it just leaves you hungry the whole time. It's it's really weird, and I, I do hope, because unfortunately there are still people, like I said, I get comments all the time, of people who stu still do believe in Jeremy and, like, say that he has no malicious intent and he's actually a really nice guy and he's he's done nothing wrong and he's not lied to anybody. And I want to live in your world because that must be like being a child every day. But at the same time, I'd love the game to come out. Obviously, I would, because then all the people wouldn't have wasted their money. It's just, I've yet to see anybody, including Jeremy, explain or give any kind of any kind of explanation on where this content actually is, what stage of development the game's actually in currently, how much of the, the sections of Alpha 1 did you have done, why couldn't you release some of that to the public and show us that you had something, why couldn't you do anything to stop your company going bankrupt, why... Why did you basically just let it happen and then say, oh, I guess fucking coronavirus again, darn that's COVID. I just really don't like it. And I will keep covering these videos because it is something a lot of my audience enjoys and something a lot of people are invested in, whether emotionally or financially. So yeah, I'll, I'll keep up with it, guys. Keep up with the channel. Subscribe if you're not already. And yeah, stay safe out there. Love you all. Bye-bye. Peace.